The first speaker I would like to introduce is Professor Eric Sweat uh, from the Centre Hospitalier um, Intercommunal in Créteil, France. Wow! Hello, Eric. Hello. Bo bonjour, is... ça va? <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> what a great introduction. Can you hear me? I can hear you well. Your image is crisp and clear. So I would yeah. say we kick off your talk on non exudative fluids on OCT associated with AMD. I'm looking really forward to it. Thank you, thank you. It's just an overview uh, about uh, all the cases in which on SDOCT we observe some hyporeflective lesion, hyporeflective fluid that in fact are not uh, exudative fluids, are not active exudative fluids. So this is my disclosure. So I choose uh, 10 cases, uh, 10 conditions are much more uh, frequent condition in which we can observe this kind of lesion uh, such as First, the stable fluid. For example, you can see this patient here with some fluid remaining, but it's really stable. No injection, and the fluid is stable. And the second one, again, no injection, and the fluid is stable. So uh, it means it's not probably an active lesion. It's just a stable lesion, and without injection, it stays the same. But the only way to uh, identify them is to stop the injection on PRN, and to observe, and if it does not move, it's just a lesion that is not an active lesion. Second case. So let's go now to the outer retinal tubulation. This kind of lesion with hyperreflective borders is really different from the usual cyst, and they remain stable. On fast imaging, we reveal some geographic features. This look like the animals or some bizarre form. They are correlated with fibrovascular lesion. Here is the SDOCT of this lesion. You can see the outer retinal tubulation that are just above the RPE on fast imaging, RPE on the top, and you can see this tubulation and the RP. It's mainly associated with fibrosis. In most of the cases, it's associated with some degree of fibrosis. You look this one, look like a little dog. And we can give a lot of name to all this animal. It is Sandrine Zweifel in the group of Rick Spade, Bailey Ford that identifies this lesion and had a lot of fun to give name to all this lesion. The third one are degenerative cysts. In some cases, the cysts are not correlated with active lesion. They are just degenerative lesion. It can be associated either with atrophy or it can be associated with exudative features. The main thing is that most of the time it's like a square or rectangle and not round in, like in exudative lesion. Look this one, after treatment, the cyst remains the same. No more injection, the patient is stable and it remains some cyst. It can be in any, any layer of the retina. Some of them are associated with atrophy, either fibroatrophic lesion, stable, it can be fibroatrophic, or sometimes it can be just associated with atrophy without any CNV. This was a paper of my friend and colleagues, Yves Cohen, some atrophy here. The fourth condition is a dome-shaped maculopathy. In the dome-shaped maculopathy, frequently we have some hyporeflective fluid on the top of the dome shape. 
And this does not react to anti-VGF or PDT. We don't have any efficient treatment to treat them. It's not an exudative, it's mostly a transudative lesion. Here, stable with time, not moving, always the same. Let's go to the next one. This one, as you guess, is a vitelliform macular dystrophy. <coughs> In vitelliform macular dystrophy, most of the time, when material disaggregated, disaggregate, we can observe heterogeneous compound with some hyporeflective lesion inside. In this one, in the, this one, in this case, it looks like it's pretty different. And we could ask if there is only the uh, material or maybe there is also some CNV. And the only way to differentiate if there is CNV or not is either ICG, either to perform OCT. And OCT is really useful in these cases. We can observe the flow, and obviously there is an abnormal flow here that are CNV within, inside the lesion with the vitelliform, pseudo-vitelliform lesion. Look, this one with a, a jellyfish-like appearance, again, it reveals the CNV. So if you have any doubt, OCTA will help you. Chronic CSR. In chronic CSR, we can observe some fluid, again, that is not associated in most of the case to active CNV and will not be treated by anti-VGF. Look, this pachycoroid, this very large pachycoroid aspect, the, here, the ICG of the patient, the FA now of the patient, with this typical chronic central serous retinopathy, with a lot of, it can, we can abort a lot of very funny shape on autofluorescence with frequently some PD and the fluid here on the patient. It's mostly again a transudative lesion and not an exudative lesion. Let's go to the next one, macular schizis. Here we can observe a macular schizis associated with CNV, type 1 CNV. You can see here the type 1 and a kind of multilayer type, type 1 lesion associated with a fibular or macular schizis. This schizis remains stable. It's not an exudative feature. You don't have to treat the patient only for that, for the schizis, because even if you treat with anti-VGF every week, it will not disappear. It will stay the same. So it has to be identified. And it's, it can be correlated with the recently published stellate non eritinary idiopathic fovolomacular retinosquisis. That is pretty the same shape. And again, it's not an exudative feature. This kind of lesion is pretty stable, does not change with time. The next one is what we call the taunting effect. The taunting effect is, means that between two here, two bullous um, drusen, large drusen or confluent drusen, uh, we could say here it's a serous PED, the, so sometimes this confluent drusen between the confluent drusen, sometimes we can observe this kind of tenting effect. It's not an exudative feature. Of course, you're allowed to perform either uh, OCTA or ICG to be sure there is no CNV, but it's frequent when you observe that, that it's in fact just a tenting effect. It's not an exudative feature. Again, again. It's pretty stable with time, uh, excepting that the bullous drusen, the bullous uh, drusenoid detachment remains the same in this patient and increase with time. This bullous drusenoid detachment uh, increase with time. One more is the uh, avascular serous PED. Look, this serous PED 
avascular be because there is absolutely no CNV on ICG. So we can perform many times ICG. We observed no CNV. And some months later, again, no CNV. And we observed mostly on the top of the lesion in front to the fovea some fluid like a hat on the top and this fluid is really transudation it's not an exudative lesion and it has not to be treated of course by anti-VEGF it will not respond to it will not respond either to PDT so this is just a transudative lesion it's not an exudative lesion in some cases it can be different and we have to differentiate when we observed the a vascularized PED. In this case, it was a vascularized PED with CNV on ICG and some fluids on the border, not on the top, but on the border. It's not a tenting effect, it's just some fluid here. That means that there is probably some CNV that were evidence on ICG. So we could see the 10 exception to this rule. Yeah, there are much more exception to much cases. Just a brief overview, the ghost drusen we identified in the department, the weight-shaped subretinal hyporeflectivity, the plateau aspect, some toxic condition here. Yeah, make inhibitors, poppers. This ferroxamine, in which we can observe, there are much more, but just some examples. Bestrophinopathy with a lot of hyporeflective lesion. And of course, the vitro retinal traction, with or without any exudative condition in diabetic maculopathy or others, but only the vitro retinal traction uh, can lead to empty space hyporeflective lesion. So I hope uh, it was helpful to differentiate uh, exudative from transudative transudation from transudation and in some cases it will help not to treat the patient and if we really identify this kind of lesion. Thank you. Thank you dear Eric and we are back in the cupola the observation room on the International Space Station and I'm not sure if France is rotating behind me at the moment. I think it's Florida, so we are a little bit in front of France, but France will come during the discussion. And um, I have the first comment quest question. I'm not sure about it, but I think it's a question. Uh, dear Professor Sweat, uh, an absolutely impressive overview. Um, forgive me, but um, um, it's so relevant. Is there a more like general approach how to differentiate the exudative from the non-exudative. You mentioned OCTA, you mentioned ICG. Can you help uh, a less experienced fellow how to distinguish and give us advice on here on this? I also can help president. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so the main thing is the fourth dimension. You are in space, so you can understand that. So yes. the, the fourth dimension is the time. Yeah. So, in, with time, if you don't move, I mean, you don't treat the patient and it uh, remains the same, it's not an exudative lesion. It's not active exudative lesion, because usually active exudative lesion increase by themselves, if you don't treat. And on the opposite, if you treat them and it regress, you observe a regression, it is an exudative lesion. So, either you consider, look, I don't treat them, and I will see the patient in two weeks, in one month, and this stays the same. This kind of degenerative cyst, for example, will not move. On the opposite, if you treat and treat, either it's a non-responder patient, as you, you have to ask yourself, maybe it's not an exudative lesion. Okay, uh, that, that's clear. And here the question is, but if you, if you are worried, you treat too late. Is there too late? Can you always wait? Or uh, are there, can you, should you better treat? What if you are not sure what to do? Okay, first, if I'm not sure, the first thing I will make all the examination, I begin with SDOCT. If it's not enough, I will continue with OCTA. 
If not FA to see the leakage, FA reveals the leakage, no leakage, probably no exudation, and ICG. After that, if I still have a doubt, usually I ask my colleagues in the department and we discuss together. Mm -hmm. The way we work is we work as a team. So mm -hmm. I, uh, and if I don't, uh, it depends on the cases. It's really case by case. If the patient is monophthalmic, have only one eye, maybe I will consider either to treat and not uh, waste a chance to improve the patient. In the, when the patient have only one eye, uh, more aggressive probably. Okay, yeah. but it can be particularly in myopic patient when you have liquor cracks or you ask yourself, is there a CNV or not? Uh, you can ask the patient to come back two weeks later. Hmm. Uh, very good. Uh, another question is: You showed the uh, the, the tr translational um, serous PD, the avascular one, on top of the of the of the dome. I, I think, and that was uh, it. Could uh, can you explain the mechanism again of the trans transition flow compared to to a CNV, CNV um, um, uh, uh, flow, fluid coming from CNV. Um, what is the mechanism behind that? Is a question. Okay, transudation uh, is different mechanism from exudation. Transudation is mainly uh, linked to the fact of the there is no reabsorption of the fluid by the RPE. Mm -hmm. We know that with with age, the Brook membrane is not the same, and is much more. And this is a theory of Alan Bird and Polaikov uh, in the 80s, probably, uh, late 80s. Uh, the Brook membrane uh, become more hydrophobic with age and more rigid. And the function also of the pump from the RPE is also in sometimes less effective. So there is a transudation of the fluid that is not reabsorbed, mm -hmm. basically, yeah. from what I know. Yeah. Very good. And there's another question. It's actually more a cry. This is all fine, Professor Sweat, but if I don't have OCTA and ICG, what am I doing? Oh, I will give you an address to buy a good one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, the clear recommendation would be uh, to call you or write, drop you an email and you will do the negotiation. Okay, I see so, that. Either you send the patient to my department, either you buy one. <laughs> well, as far as I can see, the, the question comes from, if I'm right, from South America. So that might be quite a distance to send the patient over. So um, who knows? Anyway. I can go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. Um, well, one question which is pro uh, from, from myself, which is probably not a serious one, but uh, you mentioned all the animals. You were now much into the animals and tried to describe these features by animals. Are we now getting closer to Halloween? Will the ghost, the ghost um, vessels reappear? Excuse me? I said you, you showed all the shapes, yeah. the different shapes, yeah, and different described, shape, yeah, different described in jelly, dog, uh, bull, mm. what, whatever it was. Um, but we are closer to Halloween now. Is there a renaissance of the ghost vessels? Oh. No, we have the ghost druzen. Uh, ghost some, druzen. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, some years ago I gave a, a talk on uh, the Heidelberg Symposium uh, with the ghost uh, druzen and with, uh, with the music of Ghostbusters. Yeah. Do you remember that? I do remember <laughs> that. Yeah. And is yeah. there a difference yeah. to the? What? Is that is there a difference to the non-exited? What is the ghost ghost truths and what, there are, what are they compared to what you just presented today? Because you no, mentioned it's just them. Just an example of um, an empty lesion, mm -hmm. uh, hyperreflective lesion. So yeah. the yeah. what is inside is most of the time hyperreflective, and again, it's not, not an exudative lesion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Because ghost vessels are vessels that should not appear in OCTA. That's a totally different story. Okay. Um, Eric, uh, it was great talking to you as always. A fantastic presentation, very useful. And from the response, I see already many people make notes and probably get a couple of calls. And we have to sort out the delivery of OCTA and ICG yeah. for sure. Thank you for that. And uh, I appreciate for being with us live. And uh, you stay probably with us, uh, well, not probably for sure you stay with us for the panel discussion at the very end and maybe we can come back to to ghost or or or, or like